Hello, everybody. We're recording this, and um, Maggie Murphy, our Calaveras Master Gardener, is going to be talking about the proposed idea for a garden journal. Hello, Maggie. Hi, Debbie. Are we ready to get rolling? We, we are ready. We are rolling. Great. Okay, well, what you're looking at is we will be selling as a fundraiser a printable garden journal. So you can download and print this on your home printer or take it to a print center. And you can choose specific to what you personally want, how many pages you print of something, or if it's something you don't want to track, you wouldn't bother to print that at all. And what you're looking at right now is the cover for 2021. And at the very back of the file, there will be one with the year blank. So you can continue to use this in 2022 and beyond. Let's go to slide two, Debbie. Okay. This one, a lot of people like to keep track of different plants that they grow. And one of the easy things to do is to have a little spot there you see on the lower right where you can open up your seed packet and taper glue it into a page or staple on your, your plant tag from where you purchase something. And these are the major topics that people like to keep track of under their plants. Other notes, then height and color, you'll see you might want to include when, it, when the harvest happens and if it's any good. You know, if you grow a squash and you get two or you get eight, it makes a huge difference. So the blooms and fruiting times and, you know, your notes can also include whether or not you like it, plus or minus. So this is a plant profile page. And one thing about this particular file, when you download files to print on your home computer, you could get something that is very dense and colorful and beautiful. And it would eat up a lot of your ink. I checked on Costco just as an example the other day. And for me to get a package of color ink for my HP PhotoSmart, one of each color plus camera is $103. And a pack of three black is $80. So I am paying quite a bit of money close to 200 for printer ink. And I don't want myself for printing a whole bunch of dense color things. So when you do it with very light tones, they call it an ink saver file. And that's what this would be. And you can pr print it just on plain white paper. Or you could get something that looks like parchment and print it there as well. Let's go on to the next sheet, Debbie. A useful thing in any garden is keep, to keep track of when things bloom for you. And this sheet would be that you just mark down what you have blooming in which month. And it helps when you're planning and looking at what else you might want to do. And the next one, Debbie. This one I hadn't been doing, but truthfully, I do like to sharpen and clean my tools in winter and sometimes especially for a new gardener this would be useful to know what garden tools do you have and which do you need and then to also have a blank sheet in case you find things that you want there are certain kinds of tomato cages and supports that I like and I could make a note about where to find it and I can also check off under notes if I have actually sharpened that tool recently or not or oiled it and such. And this is just a handy little checklist for people about garden tools. Next sheet, Debbie. Okay. And with garden journaling, some people like to keep track of their daily observations and make notes. Some people do monthly and other people really prefer to just do it at the end of a season. How did this season look? How is the overall effect of the spring plantings and spring blooms, the winter planting and winter blooms, summer planting, summer blooms, that sort of thing. So you can, at the end of each season, just make some notes about what you really liked and what you might want to change. You could also, if you choose on winter, mark down your, your hardest frosts and when they happened. 
slide six, Deb. Okay. And we're just going to page through the next one to show you that we also have spring and the next slide is summer and the next slide is fall. Oops, all went kind of quick. <laughs> <laughs> and then okay. you'll see that slide nine there is daily observations. You can put two days on one page or you could put one day on the page, only put one date down and make whichever observations you like. Some people like it as a writing exercise we have one of our master gardeners who likes to keep track of weather every day. So if you're a daily observation person and want to make notes, we have a page for you there. Next page, Debbie. Okay. And inventory, it helps to know what you have. So maybe you just need a quick list of names so that you don't forget the name or if you want to look it up on Google or in your gardening book, you can. And you can keep an inventory of what you're already growing. And we've sorted these by perennials and perennial vines. And then the next slide will show you that we have annuals and annual vines. And then vegetables and herbs. And bulbs, it's something a lot of us forget about until we're thinking about our spring blooming bulbs. And trees, fruits, and shrubs. These could all go together. Your fruit might actually be something like a raspberry that's a vine, but we'll put it here that all your trees, fruits, and shrubs can go together. Now, when you get to a calendar, for this version, we planted, or planted, I'm sorry, we've created one month that you could print 12 of. Um, honestly, doing 12 different months is a little bit of effort, and at a different point in time, we might offer a PDF that would also be a yearly calendar with different pictures for every month. But for starting out with this garden journal, you can just have your calendar and at the top of the month, put months and write in your days and go keep track of what you like. You'll see the next page. Some people like to write the month and have a little list. Maybe it's their task. Maybe it's weather and certain dates. Maybe it's certain notes about that particular month that they just want to keep a month by month set of notes and they could do it on this kind of a page again it's your choice which one you would print and which one you wouldn't print and the next one oh i've mentioned multiple times that i really want to keep much better track of my pests and diseases when some, when's the first time I start seeing grasshoppers? When do I want to put out my little washed out cans of uh, cat food with a little soy sauce in them for the earwigs? When is the best time? When are these things showing up? And especially because some bugs fly in their later development, but early on they crawl and you can just knock them down with soap spray. But if you go later in the season, they're going to fly up in the air when you spray. So it's a really good idea to have a date. And for those of us who do not always buy a pesticide, many of us mix some of our own concoctions. And it's a really good idea to keep track of that because they can be different. If you mix your own soap spray, you should probably write down what brand you're using because if you buy soap from a dollar store, it might be much more dilute than if you get a concentrated soap. And hopefully you'll never use an antibacterial and try and spray that on your plants because you'll probably end up with a bunch of brown leaves. So one one it, of the things, I, hey Maggie, I think one of the things this yeah. would be really helpful for is um, there was one time, it was years ago with the help desk, we had these bugs that were flying around the outside of the office and they were everywhere they were everywhere and um so we got scott involved scott onetto and he identified the bug as a type of cicada 
cicada. And he said, you know what, if you just wait two weeks, they're going to be gone. They're not, you know, hurting anything. They're not doing anything, but I guess they just hang around for a total of about three weeks and then they're gone. They move on. So kind of knowing when they come and when they leave would be nice to know. That is, that's a, a really good point. And even, you know, we had a master gardener that just loved the mountain bluebirds and she really didn't mind having some aphids or caterpillars in spring because she really wanted the birds in early spring need insects for their young. So some, some gardeners let things go quite a bit over the breeding season for birds. And it helps if you start to get an idea of the dates. And actually the dates can be very different. You know, I'm on a sunny hillside at 2,500 feet and what happens in my garden is very different than what happens in our demonstration garden where there's a lot of shade and it's more like a cooler valley into spring. I get warm much sooner than our demonstration garden and I will get corresponding bugs much sooner <laughs> than our demonstration garden. So it helps if I have my own personal notes about when it happens in my microclimate and what is happening there. Right. Hey, our next slide, slide 18. And there's some people like to propagate from seed. And if you propagate from seed, you want to know when you started something and when it germinated and where you got the seed. Are you getting seed from, if you trade seed, does the person know what they're doing or do they harvest their seed before it's really ripe? Um, or do they keep it somewhere that's too hot or too damp? And do you like the plant or not? You can make notes. So you have a nice little chart. And this is kind of a fun sheet. Some of these backgrounds are all vintage artwork. And this is a vintage cover from a seed annual from 1900, which you can't really see. But <laughs> I know what the backgrounds on these are. It is pretty. It's very pretty. It is. And then we have other people prefer to propagate. We can go to the next slide by cutting or layering. And then that kind of thing, you might want to just simply write down the date and the plant and then start keeping a bunch of notes on that particular item. Slide 20, a few times I've mentioned weather. And what I've added on the links is you can actually check the California drought conditions. Some of you might not be aware we're still really considered in, in drought this month. We're not extreme drought, but um, if you check the California drought pages, and these are government pages, it's um, more of a drought than I thought we were, to tell you the truth. And you can also check the water level of our reservoirs. But we do have people who keep notes. For me, on um, weather, you know, I have a goal to start keeping the outliers, the hottest days in the summer or the earliest hot days in the past. You know, if we hit 90 or 100 in May, your seedlings are going to fry up unless you're very certain that you keep them in the shade. And if you have, you know, two years ago, we had a hard frost in May and we all had to run out and cover our tomato plants. It depends on the weather. And for me personally, the outliers are what I really want to um, know about. Hey, Maggie, where would you suggest putting information such as soil temperature? Would you put it in this page or would there be a different page? I would probably keep it with weather because usually, okay. you know, things will say like for planting tomatoes, your night should be in the 50s or your soil temperature should be at this. So if you're trying to watch when your planting dates are, you, your soil temperature is usually going to correspond with um, your day and night temperature. Okay. And in some ways, your night temperature is, is more important because usually we're looking at soil temperature for our earth our spring planting for summer vegetables and your night temperature is where it's going to cool off. So I would keep it here. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Slide 21, the fun part. 
what's your wish list? Did you go on a garden tour and make some notes? Did you get a catalog in the mail and go, ooh, I want that? What kinds of things are you planning on getting? And writing it down and writing down where you saw it really helps. A lot of times you can forget where you saw something. You know, I've gone through the UC Davis Ar Arboretum top lists of plants and I have a few that are from there that they do start. Um, and I have others that I get from the seed catalogs and such. And for me, as I mentioned, bulbs can be very different because for me, the bulbs are really spring. Although we have our climate, a lot of people do grow summer blooming bulbs. I find the majority of the ones I like take more water and less sun than I have. <laughs> so I've, I've tried dahlias over the summer and they re summer and they really, in my they burn up here. They're not real happy for my particular microclimate. Other people in Calaveras County can grow them beautifully. But I do end up with different wish lists. And it helps to have the bulbs a little bit separate from some other things. The seeds I like on a separate list because I'm ordering seeds at a different time of year than I'm ordering bulbs or buying bulbs or going to plant sales and buying plants. And also it's different sources. So we have a wish list for plants on slide 22. Seeds, sorry about that. Okay. And then we have a wish list when you go, if you're a person who gets garden catalogs, you periodically go on the web or check people's, go on garden tours, you end up with some wish lists for garden decorations and art. In our Victory Garden page, we had people who had, say, birds poking into their tomatoes. And we everybody offered that those of us who have some water dishes out find that the birds don't bother your tomatoes. They just need some water. So do you just need some pretty shallow dishes? Or do you want to add three more next year around your vegetable garden to not have the birds poking into your tomatoes and such? So wish list for the garden decorations and art, and then 24, if you dare, <laughs> you can keep track of your purchases. Do you want to know? <laughs> Do you really Ooh, this, want to know what this said? This looks like a dangerous <laughs> list. <laughs> yes. Do you want to know how much you spend? Some people do want to have a budget and know what they spend, and some people would prefer not to. So this is completely your choice do you print this page and keep track or do you not print this page and just pretend <laughs> you you know what there it it would be interesting because what it could do and I'm thinking back to my past failures is I was bound and determined where I live to raise azaleas rhododendrons camellias ferns all those type of things and I actually am in a very alkaline uh condition so if I had started keeping track on um, things that I had purchased and no longer had, I think it would have caused me to change my course of gardening a lot quicker than it did. Yes. And I, I have found that as well, that, you know, there, there's a few garden centers around here that just have beautiful six packs in spring and you go, Oh gosh, I love these. And, even though you know six packs are going to be root bound because the plant on top is usually way too big for that little, <laughs> when it looks that good, it's way too big for that little bit of root. But you're like, oh no, I'll cut up the roots and really rip them apart and spread them out. And I found that none of the six packs I bought worked out. But it, it really took me years without putting those in my notes to go, you're just not going to buy these six packs at this size from this place because they never work out um, and it does help it does help to go back and see that certain plants are just never going to be happy no matter what you do um, and luckily our plant cell people really <laughs> it works out for them because I've taken beautiful things that just don't work where I want them to work in my high sun area and brought them down to a master gardener plant cells and somebody with shade ends up with a gorgeous plant that um, just didn't work in your location. 
but yes, it, it's amazing if you start keeping track of things, what you can learn from your own behavior and your plant's behavior. Next slide, 25. A lot of people like to map out their garden beds and they do it either on graph paper, and this is a sample of a light graph paper, so you could do a different garden layout for each bed. And you could decide whether or not each square is six inches or a foot or two inches or eight feet. The square can be whatever you want to map out the level of detail you want in your, your garden bed. And then next slide. And many people, because you can get boards in a four by a not a, yes, a four by 12, 12 foot length. A lot of garden beds are built at four by eight. So you take your 12 foot board and you just cut off four feet and you have two ends of your garden bed. So that we also added for people who do a lot of vegetable planting or maybe use four by eight raised beds for flowers, that it's a popular size. So we've put it here that you could do four by eight garden beds as a diagram. And I this think is that what is great. Thank you. This is what a printable file looks like. And then for people who get them, you can print as many of whichever page is something you want to keep track of. And you can make them into Christmas presents, you can bind them, you can put them in file folders, you can do whatever you like. And have your own garden journal. I think it's great, Maggie. And we, I know I had mentioned this before. One of the things I like to do at Christmas time is if for anybody that I send a check to, rather than just sending a check, I could print up garden journals, do it kind of like a craft project for myself and put the check inside the garden journal and just have it maybe a little bit more meaningful than just, you know, sending a check at Christmas time. Or, or maybe a stocking stuff or whatever, whatever it is you call, but it, it makes a really, it's so pretty. It's visually just very pretty. It makes me want to fill something out. It is fun to work with things that you enjoy looking at. It's a, it's a lot more fun than, you know, a plain sheet and such. Now for my members on the phone, do we have any questions? Comments? I I believe you can unmute yourself if you if you want. Um, you should be able to unmute um, if you've got any questions. Let's see. I'm not. I don't see anybody trying to raise their hand or anything like that. Let me see if I've got anybody in chat. So Maggie, just kind of curious, um, what were you kind of thinking with, with this being a downloadable file for barn to barn to board, bleh, barn to door? Um, or how what kind of pricing were you thinking of? Well, since we're going to use this video hopefully as a selling point at why don't we leave that until we turn this off because we're okay. going to share this video and and i have um two prices in mind and i'd be interesting to, to get the the group's feedback before we say this is definitely going to be it okay so why don't i do okay that's a good point let me stop sharing let me get there my oh, okay finally it came up i mean stop recording yeah. not st okay now it's stopped recording